I want to start off this video essay by telling you a story. Growing up in elementary school, there was this kid who was always in my class, and he was a troublemaker, always getting into it with the teacher, always at the principal's office. You probably had a kid like that in your class. Here's the thing, though. Despite his bad behavior, when you really got to know him, he wasn't a bad guy. He had a moral compass. He had empathy. He just was troubled. He came from a tough environment at home and was immersed in the gang world practically from birth. I'll never forget in grade 8 when we were doing classroom speeches. And he made this really great speech about how he wanted to change his life. He got a standing ovation for it. Everybody was pretty much in tears afterwards. The next year, we got into high school together. I think within a couple weeks, he was expelled for having drugs in his locker. After that, I was sure I'd never see him again. A couple months ago, 12 years later, I did end up seeing him at the gym. Now, it had been over 12 years since I last saw him, but we immediately recognized each other. We weren't best friends growing up, but we did grow up together. I think when you go to school with somebody and you just come up together, you kind of know each other. Anyways, we said what's up, I asked him how he was doing, and he said not good. He said that he was fighting a court case, and it looked like he was going to lose, and he's going to have to do some time in jail. When I asked him what happened, he didn't answer right away. He looked down, he thought about it, and I think he knew the type of person that I knew he could have been, like I knew his potential. And eventually he looked back up at me. He had a sad smile on his face and he said something that just stuck with me. He said, You know me, bro. I'm a bad guy. I didn't have a reason to change. With watery eyes, he shook my hand. He wished me well. And he finished his workout. I haven't seen him since. So why am I telling you this story in a video essay about the movie Drive? Well, this story coincides with about every central theme in the film. The main theme surrounding this idea of one's nature and whether that nature is inevitable or whether it can in fact be overcome and make way for redemption and positive change. Like my friend's situation, Drive also examines the consequences of one's past and the difficulty of escaping from a life of crime. The film centers around the unnamed protagonist known as The Driver, a quiet, stoic, meticulous, patriarchal man who's a part-time film stunt driver and mechanic by day and a criminal getaway driver by night. The Driver meets a quintessential damsel in distress, a woman named Irene, whose husband is in jail and who is thus left alone to care for her son Benicio. In the husband's absence, the driver steps into that fatherly role, and he quickly falls in love with Irene and her son. But there's a problem. The problem's not the father who eventually returns and is killed. The problem is that the driver is a criminal. He loves Irene, but he knows deep down she doesn't need another criminal like her husband that's going to endanger her and her son. What she really genuinely needs is a reliable man with no criminal baggage. Knowing this, the driver tries to change, to be the man he needs to be for her. But his criminal past keeps rearing its ugly head. I got this sweet job coming up. How about this? Shut your mouth, or I'll kick your teeth down your throat and I'll shut it for you. The driver's not sure whether he can be the man she needs, whether he can in fact escape his criminal past. And he's scared that he is a trapped scorpion, a shark, bound to his violent nature. Is he a bad guy? Yeah. How can you tell? Because he, he's a shark. There's no good sharks? No. Rock. The parallels between the scorpion and the frog fable in the movie suggest that like the scorpion, the driver cannot escape his inherent nature, despite attempting to distance himself 
from violence and crime, circumstances push him to embrace these exact violent qualities in order to defend Irene. Once Irene sees that the driver is a scorpion, a criminal with baggage, they both know that despite their love, they can never be together. But this still begs the question of whether the driver could have changed. And the question of whether humans can actually escape their nature is a pretty complex one. On one hand, certain aspects of human nature are biologically determined. They're ingrained in our genetic makeup. Evolutionary psychologists contend that these certain behaviors and tendencies have just evolved into hardwired adaptive traits over time. From this perspective, it's virtually impossible to escape your nature because these fundamental aspects of human behavior are deeply rooted in one's biology. On the contrary, while there may be elements of biological determinism in our brainstem, there's no denying the impact that cultural and environmental influences have in shaping one's behavior. And while there may be biological predispositions, the influence of parenting, friends, colleagues, economic standing, surroundings, and education can shape and possibly even override certain innate tendencies. After all, all living things adapt to their environment. Unfortunately, though, we're not given much backstory on the driver. We don't know what circumstances led him down the criminal path. He just kind of appeared. You know, he walked into my shop here about five or six years ago, uh, right out of the blue, asking for a job. Now, whether you're someone who leans towards biological determinism, nature, or you think environmental circumstances have a bigger impact, which is nurture, regarding this nature-nurture debate, one thing is for sure is that human beings are not animals. We are not sharks, frogs, or scorpions. We are fully conscious beings who have the capacity for self-reflection, empathy, and possibly change. The problem, again, lies in the difficulty in escaping one's criminal past. The driver wants out. And what do you get out of it? Just that, out of it. Unlike my friend, he has a reason to change. That reason is Irene, but he can't escape. For the rest of your life, you're gonna be looking over your shoulder. And as the old adage goes, if you truly love something, you have to let it go. Sometimes the only way to really change is to start over. That's exactly what the driver does at the end of the movie, driving off into the night. Hey, thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below, and I'll see you soon.